Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Tanner's Favorite Things. I'm Tanner Knight, and today we've got a box. So let's go ahead and dig in and see what it contains. All right, so inside this box, we have an MXL powered by Mogami box. A little bright because it's all pure white, but let's see. Well, it tells you MXL R40. But what is the MXL R40? Let's see. So this is my third MXL mic, and I'm not terribly familiar with this company, but I do know that they make sort of middle tier, lower tiered price microphones. They try to hit that under $100 price point in a lot of cases. Not necessarily the case with this mic on its MSRP. We'll talk about that later, but this is in fact a, a ribbon microphone. So you might ask, what is a ribbon microphone? Well, there's a number of different internals that a microphone can have in order to capture the sound that's being fed to it. And the ribbon is one of the older styles of sound capturing. So this is something that's been around for a long, long time. And usually when you see a ribbon microphone, you see a price tag of $2,000 or north. So for this microphone to come in around $150 MSRP as a ribbon style microphone, I'm very interested to see what it sounds like. So that's what's in the box. We've got this little swag box with a sticker and warranty card and the MXL wiping cloth. Then the microphone itself looks like this. Obviously let's get it out of this plastic here, but we are dealing with a pretty nice feeling product. There we go, let's try that again. R40 and of course XLR input. And let's see, it doesn't feel like it kind of twists apart, so I'm not gonna tear into it just yet, but it does say number eight. And can't really see much other than what you see here, but a pretty basic package with a nice little cage. So we've got what appear to be some sort of bands, replacement bands, and I don't know, I wouldn't call this the nicest cage, but it does the trick. It suspends the microphone and gets it away from plastic on plastic or plastic on metal, which seems to be the case here, but there you go, MXL R40 ribbon microphone. This microphone is more geared towards capturing voice, whether that be spoken or sung vocals. So that's kind of the reason I picked it up because I'm looking for something a little more sophisticated than my SM58. Let's see if I got one just lying around. Yeah, right here. This microphone right here, the Shure SM58, which, you know, everybody knows this microphone. It's ubiquitous. It's rock solid, it sounds great, but I've got a lot of more expensive microphones here that just have not really jumped out at me as a viable option. So SM58, it's been for podcasting and other things, but we're gonna go ahead and pop this microphone into its cage here and see what she sounds like. And of course, that's as easily done as just squeezing these tabs here and it slides right in, feels Nice and sturdy. So let's go ahead and get this plugged into the interface and see what she sounds like. All right, everybody, I've got this microphone hooked up. It's plugged into my Focusrite 18i20 Scarlett audio interface. So a pretty, I don't know, I don't, I don't wanna say a low tier, low budget item as well, but it's definitely not what you'd call a, a, a Claret or something else from Universal Audio or someone. So the Scarlett is a very ubiquitous audio interface. A lot of people have them. And I think it's a really good modeler for what this microphone might be plugged into in a kind of everyday type of situation. If you're looking to get a really good sound on a budget, that's pretty much what we're looking for here. We want the cheapest items at the highest quality. So 
Uh, what you're hearing now is not this microphone. I have the trusty Sennheiser AVX wireless microphone on my lapel capturing audio right now. We're gonna go ahead and switch over to this microphone now. All right, so you are now hearing sound coming directly from this MXL R40 number eight microphone, not exactly sure what that designation is, but a little bit more about the ribbon microphone and I'm kind of dialing in the amount of distance I have to put it for this microphone just by looking at the waveform. So I apologize for that. But what is a ribbon microphone? Let's get a little more into that. Back in the 20s, when sound capturing was starting to become more prominent, this was one of the early microphone technologies and it involves a ribbon of metal, usually aluminum, that's kind of suspended between two magnets, whether it's taped there or glued there, I'm not exactly sure how they achieved that, but you basically have magnets that are capturing the current that comes when sound brushes up against those ribbons. So the sound creates a current and it is captured by the microphone and there you go, you've got your sound. I left my air conditioner on on purpose, but it just turned off, unfortunately, because I did want to hear what kind of ambient noise this thing picks up. The ribbon microphone is really known for being rich and luscious with, with vocals and with guitars and horns, and people say that it acts kind of like how the human ear reacts to sound, and therefore it's, it's the most similar way to our ear for sound capturing and reproduction. I don't know about that, but I do know that this microphone should have just as powerful a sound capturing direction from the other side as it does this one, because the ribbon has a big figure eight pattern. So let's go ahead and turn this around and see. So I've got this thing turned around, and wow, it actually sounds very different from behind. It sounds a little bassier, maybe a little more smooth. I don't know. Let's go ahead and turn it back around and see. Testing one, two, three. Maybe it's not that different. I don't know. This feels like it's picking up a bit more of the front direction with a little bit of the echo on the back. So maybe this side is a little bit hotter than this side. Interesting. This particular microphone is a dynamic ribbon microphone. And you may be familiar with dynamic, just regular microphones like the SM58 is a dynamic microphone where it does not have any active electronics that are smoothing or boosting or doing anything. It's just the rhythm, the magnet, and sound. And that's what this microphone is, is a passive ribbon microphone. But having said that, you still need to be kind of cognizant to the fact that really large gusts of air like from a kick drum or maybe a guitar cabinet could possibly stretch out that ribbon and lower the frequency of the of the microphone so something to be aware of also you don't want to put phantom power through a dynamic ribbon microphone it's just kind of sensitive and you want to avoid that at all costs let's see what this thing sounds like with a little sung vocals and i'll try a few different vocal spacings here <clears throat> Hmm. Sounds pretty rich in the headphones. Again, going cheap on these headphones, I'm listening to the sound with my Tascam THX200 or whatever it is. The 200, they're like 40 bucks on uh, on Musician's Friend. So go ahead and pick up a pair of these if you're looking for a cheap headset. Otherwise, you know, I think the sound sounds pretty good. I'll have to go back and analyze it without, you know, real-time recording. But I also want to hear what this thing sounds like on a guitar cabinet and on a drum set. So let's go ahead and position this in front of a few different instruments and see where it shines most. All right, got my earplugs in, got my guitar. We are plugged into the Marshall Plexi 1987X 50 watt head with this PRS. This is a 594 McCarty S2 ver variant of the PRS guitar. And our cabinet is this big ass Marshall 4x12. It's the MF280 cabinet with some big old Marshall Celestian Marshall branded speakers. So that's what we're playing today. We've got the microphone position right in front of the upper left 
speaker. And just for kicks, I have my standard SM58 on the other speaker. And we're just gonna do a little AV comparison and see what this thing sounds like as compared to the old trusty SM58 on a guitar cab. So here we go. So far the waveforms look pretty similar, so I think we're dealing with some good comparables. So let's go ahead and hear what this thing sounds like with a little different register. We'll, we'll play low, we'll play high, add some dirt, and just get a good, good feel for what this thing can do. Got a little weird clipping in the signal, but that's not the microphone. That's coming through the signal chain of the guitar somewhere. I don't have enough time to chase it out, but that's the Boss Super Overdrive SD1 pedal adding some crunch. Let's go to the metal zone and see how this thing can handle some serious gain. There you go, that's the MXL M40 ribbon microphone with guitar. A little clean, a little dirty. Let's go ahead and just hook it up over the drum set and see if we can get some good bass line sounds from the kit. All right, I've got this microphone positioned right at the bottom of your screen in front of the kit. So this is gonna be kind of an experiment. I don't know exactly what gain level I need. So far that looks like it's picking up everything in the right, the right range. But uh, let's go ahead and just hear this kit. Okay, one more time. Let's go ahead and see if I can incorporate some of these toms a bit more and the cymbals just to get a good variety of sounds. Okay, next I just want to run through each one of these individual instruments here and just do an A-B comparison. So here we go, here's just the hi-hat.
snare. Well, let's just play that cymbal. So this microphone also is billed as a great capturer of horns, like if you have a trombone, trumpet, and I don't know, brass section in a ska band or something like that, then this would be a good microphone for you as well. I don't have any capabilities for wind or brass instruments, so sorry, but we do have the guitar, the drums, and a little bit of vocals for your listening pleasure. So. Thank you for watching. If you do like this content, feel free to like and subscribe. That always helps me in deciding what content to bring to you. I'd love to hear if you have any success or frustrations with this particular MXL R40 ribbon microphone. And uh, if there's anything that we can help out with, then hey, I'm all ears. But hopefully you learned a little bit about ribbon microphones, about this particular one, and whether it's worth the 100 or so, 150 so dollars that you would find this microphone for on the open market. So. Go ahead and make your own choices, but again, I'd love to hear what you have to say. So thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.